On this channel, I love to talk about geopolitics, which is the interaction between geography, how the earth is shaped, and politics, how people and countries interact with each other. This time, we'll discover why the Strait of Hormuz is so important, and how being narrow has put this stretch of water at the centre of global international tensions. Before we dive into why the strait is so important, let's find out where on earth it is. This is the Arabian Peninsula. On one side of the peninsula, the Arabian Sea is connected to the Mediterranean by the Red Sea, which runs between the peninsula and the continent of Africa and joins the Mediterranean Sea here through the Suez Canal. On the other side of the peninsula, the Arabian Sea runs into the Gulf of Oman, which is connected to the Persian Gulf between these two gulfs is this very narrow stretch of water, the Strait of Hormuz. The strait is bounded on either side by the countries of Iran, Oman, and the United Arab Emirates. The Strait of Hormuz helps transport loads of oil per day on some of the biggest ships on Earth. We'll go into more detail about that in a moment. Because of how narrow the strait is, and the volume of oil that is transported through it, the Strait of Hormuz is the world's most important choke point for the transport of oil. Just to get an idea of the scale of the amount of oil and other energy products transiting the strait, here's some quick maths. In 2018, the average number of barrels of oil and other petrol liquids passing through the strait was about 21 million barrels per day. Each barrel is about 159 litres, which equates to a total of over 3 billion litres, or more than 1,300 Olympic swimming pools of liquid per day. This is about 21% of the entire world's daily petrol consumption. One third of all of the sea transited oil on Earth travels through the strait, as well as one quarter of all of the traded natural gas. The Strait of Hormuz is only about 39 kilometers wide at its narrowest point. Because of this, ships transiting the strait must stick to strict shipping lanes. Despite its narrow width, the Strait of Hormuz is deep enough to accommodate the largest ships on Earth, the epically named Very Large and Ultra Large Crude Carriers. Large ships exiting the Persian Gulf via the Strait of Hormuz have to participate in a carefully choreographed dance. The first shipping lane starts in the territorial waters of Iran. It then passes between three islands, which are currently administered by Iran, but claimed by the UAE. Next, our supertanker must pass into Omani territorial waters to transit the narrowest shipping lanes in the narrowest part of the strait. Once through the strait, there are more shipping lanes in the Gulf of Oman that can take ships back into Iranian territorial waters. We've talked about how the Persian Gulf is connected to the Mediterranean Sea via the Strait of Hormuz, but actually in 2018, about 76% of the crude oil transmitted through the strait headed the other direction, to Asia, and most of that went to only five countries, China, India, Japan, Singapore, and South Korea. To get to the large markets in East Asia, oil tankers usually have to traverse another oil choke point, the Strait of Malacca, which we might talk about in another video. So the Strait of Hormuz is narrow. So narrow that it falls within the territorial waters of the boundary countries. This means that any incidents within the strait have the potential to shut down transit, or at worst, to spark conflict between countries. Just a few months before the release of this video, there were attacks on ships in the Gulf of Oman, near to the opening of the Strait of Hormuz. Incidents like these threaten the stability of the strait and increase tensions between boundary countries. Now we know just how important the Strait of Hormuz is to global oil trade, we can imagine just how damaging any disruption to the flow of oil through the strait would be to countries reliant on receiving the oil and on those countries reliant on the income from selling oil. So aside from the oil buying countries trying to reduce their reliance on foreign oil, what else have the oil producing countries done to try and mitigate any threats to the stability of the Strait of Hormuz as a shipping route? 
Well, only Saudi Arabia and the UAE can bypass the Strait of Hormuz by shipping outside of the Persian Gulf and have pipelines to get the oil to those ports. Remember that 21 million barrels per day transited the Strait of Hormuz in 2018. Saudi Arabia has the East-West Pipeline that can transport up to 5 million barrels per day to its port on the Red Sea. Although in 2018, this pipeline was only used to transport 2 million barrels per day. It also has a natural gas pipeline, which can transport the equivalent of 300,000 barrels per day. The UAE has the Abu Dhabi crude oil pipeline to transport oil directly to the Gulf of Oman, which can pump up to 1.5 million barrels per day, but was only used for 600,000 barrels per day last year. Other pipelines exist, but most are relatively small and cross international boundaries, so have fallen into disuse due to the recent conflict or political disagreements between countries. So what does the future hold for the Strait of Hormuz? Well, that's a very tricky question, and one that I probably can't answer. As we've discovered, the importance of the strait is amplified by the geography of the region, including a lack of viable alternate shipping routes. But it's also important to acknowledge that the strait is fully integrated into the territorial waters of various countries, meaning that the politics of the region affects the stability of the strait as a shipping route. The Strait of Hormuz will likely continue to be one of the most important shipping routes in the world, especially if the global hunger for oil continues.